In a previous video, we tried to exchange our Litecoin for Zcash using Shapeshift from our Jax wallet. It failed. So in this video, we're going to try to see what happened. We did this last night. The transaction wasn't going through. Woke up next morning. Transaction was still, we couldn't tell what was going on. So we're just going to go ahead and see right now if we can figure out what actually happened. One of the things I want to highlight is we have a lot of parties actually involved in this transaction. We have the Litecoin blockchain, we have the Zcash blockchain, we have the Shapeshift exchange, and then we have the Jax wallet. So something failed, and what I want to point out during this troubleshooting session is who failed. Was it the Litecoin blockchain? Was it Jax? Was it Shapeshift? Or was it the Zcash blockchain? So let's go ahead and take a look at what we might do if and when you run into a problem like this. All right, so let's just take a look at Shapeshift. Now on Shapeshift side, they're still sitting here waiting for us to deposit Litecoin. So we have this order ID in it. Everything's still valid. They're still waiting on us. We refresh the page. We have you know, a waiting deposit. So from Shapeshift perspective, they're kind of just sitting around waiting. Now let's take a look at what Jax has to say. First thing that, come, that we should notice is, boom, our funds are back. So this says we got 0 0.04 Litecoin. Last night after we sent the transaction, it said we had zero, and now they're telling us that we have 0 0.04. And if we look up here in our transaction history, we see just the old transactions we have. We don't have the transaction that we made to send this 0 0.04. So there's no indication of what happened. So in this situation, the best thing to do is to go look on the blockchain using a block explorer at your account, see what happened. One thing to note about if you're using a Jax wallet, you can't just look at the address that's being displayed to you because Jax uses multiple addresses behind the scenes. So if you want to go look at your account on the blockchain, you got you have to know which address to look at because your Jax wallet is actually comprised of multiple different addresses. So let's go take a look at those addresses. How do you do it? You want to go to the hamburger button and click. Then we want to go to menu and tools and click display private keys. Now we really just want to see the public keys, but the only way to see the, all those public keys is to also look at the private keys. So hopefully Jax will in, make an enhancement in the future because we really shouldn't have to be exposing our sensitive information just to see non-sensitive information. So don't share them. They're telling us that because the private keys are sensitive. We understand. Click. We understand. Okay, so we're troubleshooting Litecoin. So we're going to take a look at Litecoin keys, loading private keys, and first thing we notice is there's a bunch of them. So we've got about one, two, three, four, five different addresses in here. Main thing to take a quick look at is the balance. So let's see what they say about our balance. Zero for that one, zero for that one, zero for that one, zero for this one, but ding, ding, we've got 0.04 Litecoin in this address. So this is the one that I would wanna take a look at. If you are looking at this and, and you see multiple different addresses and you're gonna to wanna to take a look at each one if they have a balance. All right, so this address here, let's go ahead and copy the public key and we can go out and we're going to go to, I already have the tab pulled up. We're gonna to go to the block cipher and that is located at live.blockcipher.com. Over on the right, blockchains, we've got a couple of different available to us on this particular website. We're gonna choose Litecoin. So this is a Litecoin block explorer. On the front page, they give us some transaction uh, details current transactions that are happening on the blockchain and the most recent blocks. All right, so up in the search bar, we can search for an address, a transaction or a block. We have our address, so let's paste it in, click enter, and we see received 0 0.04, balance 0 0.04, sent. So we have send, we haven't sent any Litecoin from this address. Now what we're interested in is the transactions. We wanna know, we tried to make a transaction last night what has happened what's the details regarding the transactions for this account so we scroll down and we see transactions all right so this looks good and there's only one transaction associated with this account that tells us that the transaction we tried to do last night is not in play so it's not on the blockchain there's no activity on the litecoin blockchain relating to that transaction all right so let's take a look at our players and let's just see what we can conclude at this point so we know that we started out in a Jax wallet and we tried to send Litecoin to a Shapeshift account on the Litecoin blockchain. And then after that, Shapeshift would have sent Zcash to a Zcash 
account on the Zcash blockchain. What we just took a look at was we look, took a look at the Jax wallet and then we inspected the Litecoin blockchain. And we saw that on the Litecoin blockchain, no evidence of our transaction. So that means that from Shapeshift's perspective, and we can verify this, they're still waiting. So they're just sitting, waiting there for the transaction to come through. So as far as as far as they're concerned, they're, they've done their job, they're, they're still waiting. So Zcash hasn't even entered the picture whatsoever. We can tell also that Shapeshift appears to not have entered the picture. They're sitting waiting. So right now, in terms of this failure, we're looking at the Jax wallet and we're looking at the Litecoin blockchain. Now the Jax wallet, they're telling us nothing. They're just acting like nothing ever happened. Same thing with the Litecoin blockchain. They're not telling us anything about our transaction. What should we do next? From this point, I would be real concerned about Jax because Jax is the application that's supposed to send the transaction to the Litecoin blockchain and the, and the transaction is supposed to go through. I, I wouldn't expect there to be a problem with the Litecoin blockchain. I would be looking at Jax right now and saying, okay, Jax, what's going on? You were supposed to do this. We look at the blockchain. We don't see any evidence and you, you're just acting like nothing's happened. You're just, there's no details. Let's go ahead and go to this next link. This is the Jax knowledge base and I have found my transactions aren't going through. My tra transactions keep failing. Uh, all right, well, let's see what Jax has to say about this. Okay, so Jax, don't worry about these links. All these links, I'm gonna leave them in the description down below. They say your transactions can get dropped from the memory pool if, there are, if there's a lot of congestion on the blockchain network. When a transaction gets dropped from the memory pool, the funds will be refunded to the originating address. Okay, so that kind of seems like maybe it sounds like something that could have happened to us. Let's just see here, they give us some other reasons. Now, this one is dealing with network. This one's dealing with network. This one's dealing with the maximum deposit limit by Shapeshift. We, that's this here, send up to. We know we didn't go over that. We didn't send 144 Litecoin. So we know none of that stuff applies to us. So not this one, not this one. And now here they start talking about memory pool again. So let's see. In the case of your transaction getting dropped from the memory pool, you can identify by looking, taking the transaction ID and your transaction history and see whether it exists on the block explorer. Okay, so this is what we did. We went on the Block Explorer and we, we took a look to see if that transaction was there and it wasn't. If the transaction has not, cannot be found, your transaction likely got dropped from the memory pool. Okay, so now we're kind of zeroing in on what may have happened. Down here they give us some more details about, they tell us that it could take up to 72 hours for the transaction to be fully dropped from the memory pool. First question that comes to, that may come to your mind is what's a memory pool? At Bitcoin Wiki, Found this definition for memory pool. Let's take a look at what they say. Generators store transactions waiting to get into a block in their memory pool after receiving them. So generators are miners that are mining transactions. They generate Bitcoin every time they mine a block. That's the reward for mining the actual block. So when a transaction hasn't been included in a block, it is unconfirmed and sitting in a memory pool. Now this is saying for Bitcoin, but this is also the way Litecoin works. Now once a transaction gets included in a block, it becomes confirmed. Now for the transaction to be considered to be permanent, it needs to be, it needs to have what they call confirmations. What's a confirmation? Every time an additional block gets put on the blockchain after your block where your transaction's included, that's a confirmation. Typically six of those need to happen before the transaction can be considered permanent. All right, well, this tells us what a memory pool is, and it helps us distinguish the difference between unconfirmed transactions, the ones that, that are broadcast to the blockchain and they're waiting to be put in blocks, and confirmed transactions, but we still don't know any details around this memory pool besides what Jack said that can help us understand what happened. So we have this other article on the Bitcoin Stack Exchange, how do transactions leave the memory pool? I want to point our attention to this bullet point here. The transaction was at the bottom of the mempool when sorted by fee per size. The mempool has reached its size limit and a new higher transaction was accepted evicting the bottom. So evicting means canceling or kicking it out. So our transaction would be kicked out if we had a low fee relative to all of the transactions that were currently unconfirmed in the mempool. All right, now that's very likely what happened to us because we were sending a very small amount, $2 or so, and so the fee associated with that was probably very small. So this applies, this is talking about for Bitcoin, but this the same concept applies to Litecoin. The network gets congested. That means there's a lot of transactions coming in, filling up the mempool. So at that point, it's possible that low fee transactions could get kicked out and effectively canceled. 
Okay, so just to go ahead and summarize this analysis, our initial task, our intention was to use our Jax wallet to send funds to Shapeshift, and the funds that we were sending were Litecoin. So Jax wallet was going to send funds to the Litecoin blockchain, broadcast the transaction, and when that transaction was included in a block, those funds would be effectively moved from our Jax wallet to a Shapeshift wallet. And as soon as Shapeshift received those funds, they would send Zcash from a wallet that they control to our Zcash wallet that we gave them. So as far as we got, we went ahead and broadcasted with a Jax wallet. We broadcasted our transaction to the Litecoin blockchain. We Our transaction was unconfirmed when it initially was broadcasted. It got included in the mempool and it appears that our transaction got kicked out of the mempool because the Litecoin network was congested. So in this transaction, we can't blame, we can't blame Zcash for sure because Zcash never came into play. We can't blame Shapeshift because they never received transfer. And so now we're just looking between Litecoin and Jax. This, uh, this is something that typically can happen or on any blockchain if they get congested. The only problem that I kind of see here is that Jax really didn't let us know what was going on. So hopefully in future versions of the Jax wallet, they can do a little bit better job at reporting back and letting us know the state uh, what's happening. So at the current moment, the transaction never happened. There's no trace of it on the blockchain. So now while whenever we log into our Jax wallet, we're not seeing anything because all they're doing is going to blockchain and checking our accounts. And there's no trace of that transaction that we tried to do last night. That's why we see everything's up to date now. In the meantime, so this summarizes uh, troubleshooting steps that you can take anytime that you, you do a transaction and it doesn't go the way you expect. Hope this video was helpful. Please like the video, subscribe, and support this Deep Lizard channel. Thank you.